Okay, so there are two things in this world that no one can take away from me, and they are something that I hold myself in very high regard, not by imaginary reasons, but because of a proven track record and a lot of time and sacrifice put into it. And those two things are being a dog trainer. I think I'm a pretty good dog trainer at this point. I put a lot of time and effort into understanding all of the dynamics, the most obvious and the most subtle when it comes to why dogs have behavior issues and the relationship they have with their owners and how to resolve it and teach it to these owners. I'm pretty good at that. The other thing that I am really good at and no one can take this from me is my acumen as a businessman. I do what I say. I respond in a timely fashion. I am punctual. If I am going to be two minutes late, you're gonna find out so that I am not inconveniencing you. I've always, from the first day that I realized that I can make a living doing something other than working for someone else, I've always shown nothing but appreciation for those people that give me. Now, my clients, because of the nature of what I do, I'm gonna put high expectations on them. They're gonna have to do the work, they're gonna hear the truth, and sometimes have to do and hear things that they're not always comfortable with. But I'm there for them and they know that. I am 100%, I'm gonna take my client's call, I'm gonna give them that time, I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna communicate. That's what a good business person does. Now, a lot of you probably have noticed if you're a little older, the world is not always running on that way when you're trying to get goods and services with your hard-earned money. I try to be not like that. And there are plenty of people who are still have a good business acumen, but nowadays it is. And what I find is the bigger issue is the unapologetic way that these people approach it. So if someone's late, they don't reply back and you have the audacity to question them and ask them why they are handling their business in that way, especially someone like me who knows how he handles clients on a daily basis, um, these people sometimes, they do not like hearing that. They wanna get defensive. They're big on gaslighting. Gaslighting is very strong where they try to recreate a narrative of what happened where, hey, it took a month to do this. Well, I did it right away. Um, do you wanna go back to the old calls and texts and see the, the you know, forensics here to see what's really going on? So people think now that if they believe their bullshit, everyone else is supposed to believe it. Maybe in your own personal life, but not when it comes to the whole business. This is our money we're spending for something. And in this case in point, it is a real estate deal. So there's a lot at stake and there's a timeline and things that have to get done in a certain, you know, certain order, certain, certain amount of days, right? So again, I have this appraisal. It's taking almost two weeks now. It took almost a month just to get this even going. Just this person, every time you to you know, text them, it takes days to get back. I have three texts trying to follow up calls and it's like for every, you know, every fifth day I get a, a quick little update, which means nothing because it, we're not getting progress and it's just basically saying lip service of what's not happening instead of being like, oh, this is ridiculous. Or even again, someone like me who, if I feel that a customer is being inconvenienced or having unnecessary stress, I'm gonna go above and beyond to try to alleviate that for them because I am at their service. Um, and I'm just a stupid dog trainer. These are real estate people doing pretty big transactions, a lot of money at stake. Um, these are people's homes. There's a lot of things that people are stressed out when they're doing these deals. To not have enough awareness or empathy, like when I talk to this guy, I use the term empathy and compassion a lot, because to me, you have to have empathy to be a good business person. If you're just thinking about how you're gonna do your thing or everyone's gonna, I'll get around to it and I'm not caring about how, or, or he told me I was bothering him because I was, I was like, well, you're not replying back to me, dude. Okay, and there was something that should have been done like a week and a half ago and it's still not done. And I'm not hearing from you. Did it get done? Can you, can you tell me what the progress report is? So I'm annoying you? And you know, again, I hate to say it, and this is, I'm sorry to any of my beloved Alaskans, business runs like, uh, like, like molasses, shit and molasses up there. I mean, it really is just so slow and so casual. I mean, I had deals where it's like, we have a timeline that yes, on this Friday, we have to sign something Monday, it's like, what happened to you Friday? Oh, I just went fishing and I was where there was no cell reception. So that's your rationale instead of getting someone to cover for you. These people are just, it's again, it's just a disconnect. Is they're up there and I love it there. I see myself as an honorary Alaskan, but the speed that I've been operating, and I'm gonna be honest, that's part of why I'm back down in California to do my business. It was a little harder getting a push and getting goods and services taken care of the way that I need, because I got a lot of moving parts, and then they are treating me like I'm the bad guy when I'm actually creating jobs, pushing money into that. I mean, a lot of things that like, I shouldn't get that attitude, but I'm asking you to just do what I, and that was why I prefaced all this with me explaining what I'm priding myself in as a business owner, the way that I give it to my clients, and I'm just a dog trainer. It's not that hard to do. It's called caring about the person who's making you money more than yourself and seeing how their situation is before reacting to them. And then maybe you're gonna give a little more of yourself.